Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another video of another <laughs> Lenovo Think Center. Uh, <laughs> I did get a, a fair number of these in a, in a large donation, so that's why we've been going through through uh, you know so many of them week after week here. But we're we're almost at the end. This is another one of the Think Center M58E models. This is a 7269 machine type. Uh, so just taking a look at it, it's going to look ex exactly the same as almost every other uh, Think Center from this generation and the generation after it. So what's a little bit different about this one is this is still a socket 775, so LGA 775 capable. However, this is using DDR2 memory instead of DDR3 memory. So it's obviously a little bit older. And, you know, this time period of systems, there was that carryover uh, from DDR2 to DDR3, just like in the core I early days, you had like, what is it, generation three to generation four, you had that kind of rollover between DDR3 and DDR4 memory as well, where there, there was a little bit of a, um, a generational compatibility there, where some of the processors might have, could have supported either memory, depending on the the chipset that was installed on the system board. So this is just a, a factor of this as well, that uh, this is uh, G41 Express, which I think is uh, GDR2 only. And then if you went to the G40, I want to say G45 is where it moved up to DDR3. Anyways, uh, let's take a look at this. We're going to switch the camera view to top down and we'll pop it open and you'll see what should look very familiar from other uh, models that we've looked at. All right, top down, we uh, have the same thing going on here. If you flip, I'll just tip it over to the side here. You've got these buttons here. There's one on either side and press them in. Door flips up very easily. Then we've got a couple things that we can access. So the first thing, if we pull this blue tab here, it will allow us to remove the drive carriage, right? You see it's plugged in there, SATA power and signal. And then all we have to do is just kind of get a hand on the um, DVD drive here and it'll flip forward on its own hinge and now we have access to the rest of the system board here right so we've got a pair of DDR2 memory slots we have two SATA connectors on the system board one is for our drive and one is going to our optical drive there are no additional SATA ports on this particular uh, setup here there are some headers here for additional USB ports uh, just kind of behind here beside the power supply. Of course, there are no USB ports, uh, more room for USB ports. But again, it's usually possible that when you had these systems, this system board may have actually been used in both this small form factor chassis as well as a mid-tower chassis, which would have provided additional probable, additional USB header uh, connections either at the rear of the system or along the front. Now the front of this one again only has the two. There might have been four ports on the front of that which would make sense why there'd be another header that you'd be routing through to connect to this. Uh, processor, uh, chipset, battery, uh, internal speaker connects up right here. Uh, just the single system fan that's running onto the processor and then the fan inside the PSU. We've got a PCIe by 16 slot here where we would be able to put a graphics adapter it would need to be a low profile graphics adapter and then an old style pci connector there which would be for i guess if you needed another communications port or something i can't imagine what else you would be installing into a machine at this period of time that you would need a standard pci port for unless it was something like you needed a modem still uh, or you needed to add additional communications ports, like an additional serial port or two to the system as well, uh, or maybe an additional NIC uh, on top of the one gigabit Ethernet NIC that's installed uh, on the system board. But anyways, that's what you're looking at here. Uh, we're going to close this up now, and we will uh, get the system booted up and take a quick look into Windows at what is going on there. Oh, what do I, yeah, there we go. Make sure that's all clipped in there. All right, and we'll get this plugged in. Windows starting up here. We will check what we've got installed on this one as far as 
specs and whatnot goes. I can tell you ahead of time, it does have 4 gig of RAM installed. That's been the standard amount of memory that I've installed on each one of these systems as I get them refurbished. If possible, you know, if I had a lot more memory, I might install 8 instead, but I only have a, so much to go around. In fact, I'm, I am used up almost all of my DDR3 DIMMs uh, getting all of these systems upgraded and, and prepared, which is a good thing um, to, uh, to make use of these. So let's take a look at configs. CPU, we have a Pentium dual core E5400. That's a 2.7 gigahertz dual core based system. So again, low end, uh, should be able to handle general computing tasks. We have our four gig of memory. Now this is something that I did notice on some of the other models uh, that run the DDR3 memory, Windows shows it as DDR2. And then in this case, this is DDR2 memory, and Windows is reading it as SD RAM. So it's very interesting. I guess it's just something about the way that the chipset communicates with Windows 10, that it uh, doesn't know what it's talking about. Uh, but it at least recognizes the correct amount of memory that's in there. And then the disk we've got here is just 160 gig Western Digital Drive. Uh, that's, you know, going to do its job. It's not going to be anything special or fantastic or powerful in any way, shape, or form. And that's it. System is ready to go. Another one to go out the door in a uh, in a donation. So again, I apologize for the somewhat repetitive nature uh, of some of these videos. Uh, every other week or every week or so, we had so many of these small form factor desktops that look almost exactly the same as each other. And there's, I find it interesting that you know over the course of uh, these generations, you've got so many of these systems that. They, they really didn't change a, a heck of a lot. And then sometimes they made massive changes to the design of some of these cases that didn't make sense in, in certain cases. You know, this, this design right here that's lasted for a couple generations seems fine to me. And then a couple of the newer models, they switched it around and did something different on the inside or changed the front bezels. Uh, you know, I guess it's a marketing thing in some cases. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video and you are enjoying this series of Think Center reviews. I know they're very repetitive. Uh, however, uh, you know, it's important for me to catalog these systems for my sanity uh, and, and remembering what I've done over the years uh, with fixing these systems up before they get donated. And I, I, I'm happy that you would watch this video and follow this journey with me. Uh, as always, I hope you guys are staying healthy and staying safe in these strange and uncertain times. And we will catch you in the next one.